So my talk is about asynchronous decision making. Uh, I, I've not invented anything. It's something that we've been doing for ages. I've just been reflecting on, on what it is. Uh, you know, I think our pro many of our open source projects are extremely efficient. We don't have any meetings. We're working with people from different cultures, different time zones, different companies. There is no boss. And it works. We, we, you know, many of our projects deliver uh, world-changing software, I would say. Uh, Owen is here from the Hadoop crowd. Uh, I think we can rightly say that Hadoop has started an industry. There's, there's a number of companies doing very good business based on that, and that's, that's from the Apache Software Foundation. Uh, my name is Bertrand Lacretta. Bonus points for pronouncing it right. Um, I work with Adobe in Basel. Uh, we have an Adobe Applied Research Center. I'm a principal scientist, meaning uh, that's tech guy. And uh, I'm also on the, very active in the Apache Software Foundation mm -hmm. since the early 2000s, uh, on the board of directors for the ninth time, I think. So both on the technical side and also on the, uh, you know, the board does general management of the foundation. And I've been reflecting a lot on, on uh, these topics how the open source projects are efficient and how can we replicate that uh, in, our, in our business or in other organizations. Uh, of course we can make fast decisions but we have many factors to take into account. So uh, I think in our projects we, we do lots of decisions. If you look back at how, how you shape software, how you agree, agreeing in Apache projects can be sometimes a bit difficult. So it it's all relates to making decisions, uh, getting consensus on the decisions that we make, and I've been trying to think about how we how we do that. Um, at the at ApacheCon Sevilla uh, 2016, I had this talk called "I will not attend your meeting." I'm an open source person. It's a bit more provocative. It's kind of the same topic. You know, how how can you work without having meetings? This was done more from the provocative angle. But it's the same. Uh, it's the same thing. We don't have meetings in open source, or very rarely. Uh, I, we were just talking with Chris uh, in Apache Con, the Apache conference. I think all of us, what we prefer is the hallways conference. It's, you know, it's, it's just chatting with people in the hallways or at the bar or in the garden somewhere. The talks are good, but but it's things very often happen in the in the hallways. Um, this is another. Uh, I wrote this blog post for, we have a series of blog posts called Success at Apache on the Apache Software Foundation blog, which I think is pretty good. And I wrote one of these posts on asynchronous decision making, so it's the same thing as I'm telling you today, but with a bit more detail. And I'm hoping to have another one soon, uh, maybe next week. So this is the, this is the gist of what I'm, what I'm telling you about. Uh, remote teams and especially with remote software teams, need to make lots of decisions all the time. We are making decisions which have impact on the project, so we need to agree on them, we need to make the right decision, and when we have options, we need to agree on which option we take. I often say that uh, the Apache model works best for infrastructure software. The thing that doesn't have a UI, doesn't have colors, doesn't have buttons, if you have tried to agree on, a, on the color of something in an Apache mailing list, <laughs> you know what this is about. It's easier to agree on stuff that's infrastructure because you, you have, if you have a web server, it's pretty, pretty obvious what it needs to do. You might debate how do we do that, but what it needs to do it needs to serve web pages very efficiently. Yet, if you, if you look at the Apache web server, the HTTPD project, it's extremely modular. It's a pretty small core. And every, everything else is modules. My theory is that that's because people could not agree. You know? <laughs> and, and really, modularity is a way to solve community problems. If you cannot agree on something, do modules. And one, you know, maybe someone will use one module A, the other person will use module, module B. Both are happy, and you're still sharing the very important core, which is, which is a key. So I think one of the key of success in these projects is reducing the surface on which you have to agree, and that's what a micro core does. You know, we have to agree on this very key, important part. The rest is not as important. So the question is, how, how can that happen without meetings? And how can we keep the process efficient and fun? 
I think the fun factor is extremely important, and as well in business, in companies. If, you, if your colleagues, if your employees are not having fun, when they have an opportunity to leave, they will leave. Or you have to pour lots of money on them, which is expensive. So, you know, I think the fun is, is important, and we can keep this fun. Um, by, by being active on both sides, both the tech side and the administrative side of the Apache Software Foundation, sometimes it's hard to keep the fun. You know, when you're, when you're disagreeing on something important, it's hard, but we, we should strive for doing that. We have a nice uh, concept that we mention sometimes on our list, the shared neurons. Putting our neurons together to do something great, and we need ways to do that. So what is asynchronous decision making? Let's, let's define more, more precisely what we're talking about. Uh, I haven't done, I'm not a psychologist, I haven't done very complicated studies about that, I'm a pragmatist, so maybe someone has a psychology degree and they talk to me after the, after the presentation maybe. But this is how I see decisions. Uh, there are, there are four, four main phases. First, you need to brainstorm. You, you know, you need to have wild dreams or wild ideas or how, what could we do? And, and at, at this stage, you don't want to have any, any constraints. You no, know, just think freely about what, what's possible. Then you will refine these, these brainstorms into actual options. What are the options that we could take at this point? We have to do a specific uh, function in our, in our software. We could do it this way, or we could reuse maybe other software, or we could do it this the other way. And at this stage, you should try to uh, keep your mind open. So not, you know, try not to be too biased. Say, okay, what are the options? Maybe, and sometimes that happens when you're more experienced than others. Maybe you know that option C is not good. Uh, there's very little chance that we're going to take option C, but still include it for fairness with your colleagues to, for, you know, so they, they feel like they have something to say. And even if you, you're pretty sure, uh, later in the consensus, you will come up with a, with a realize that it's not a good option. Then you need to build the consensus. That's the third stage. That's the one that is often the hardest because you know while you're doing the options, there's no, there's not much at stake. You, you, someone says, "Oh, I want to have this option." Say, so, "Okay, yeah, we keep it. We'll, we'll we decide later to take it or not." But once you have to do the consensus, that's when uh, things can get get heated. And we have mechanisms for that. We talk about for that. We talk about that. And then the, the decision. Once you have the consensus. The decision is just formalizing it, so having a way to document the decision and so that next week it's still valid or when someone new joins your team, you can point them to that, say, oh, this is the decision that we made last month and you have the explanation and so on. So the, I think the really where, it, where, it's, uh, where there's work to do is at the consensus uh, level. Uh, something interesting to note is that unless you have a formal reason to, to, to have to do that. Uh, none of this requires people to be in the same place at the same time. You know, uh, I consider a phone meeting the same place. No, none of this needs to be synchronous. Everything can happen asynchronously if you have the right tools. Uh, and that, that's, that's what, what, I'm, what I'm trying to explain here. In some cases, like the, like the uh, Apache board meeting, uh, the, the Apache bylaws require us to make decisions in a certain way. And that requires us to be on the phone, to have a vote on the phone. Or maybe, maybe we could try to, to you know, bend that a bit, but it, it's required. I'll also speak a bit about uh, the Swiss government, which interestingly works in a similar way. And they also have re requirements to be at the table and make a decision. But in most cases, if, it's, uh, if you're creating so software, Nothing requires you formally to be, to be in the same place to do that. So it can really be uh, synchronous. The tools, a radio and a drawer out of wood. Uh, I, I'm trying to get out, not, not, uh, not talk too much about software tools because they can be, sometimes it, people can be very opinionated about which tool you want to use. And I, I want to avoid this, I want to stay at the, at the higher level. So for me, the, the two main tools that you need to do that is a shared asynchronous communications channel. A channel where everybody uses the same channel to speak. 
you talk to the project instead of talking to specific people, and you have a way to uh, share the channel and to branch out into more specific discussions. Uh, at Apache, we do that by default with mailing lists, which are often considered as a northern county tool today. The young folks, they say, oh, no, mailing list, that's no, all crap. Um, the thing is that a mailing list is very, if it's used with lots of discipline, that's another question. But if you have the right discipline on the mailing list, it, you can reach the people very eff efficiently, and you can have threads which uh, I can totally ignore if I'm not interested in this specific discussion. So it's easy to pay attention to what you need to, completely ignore the rest. And I, I'm used to, you know, I've been doing that for uh, many years now. I can follow mailing lists which have 300 messages a day. I'm not reading the 300 messages. I may be reading uh, instantly 10 of them. And the rest I skip because of the, because of the subject line, because of the threading. Uh, so if, if you use it well. It's the same thing as if you do marine radio. I have my sailing instructor in the room. <laughs> Emmanuel, Emmanuel Lecharny, on top of being a volunteer at Apache, is a volunteer at Les Glenans in France, which is the best sailing school in France. He was an instructor. Um, when you do, when you're sailing on, or when you, when you, uh, you know, uh, driving a ship, you have a radio which has one common channel. Channel 16 is a broadcast channel. That's why you call for help or you call for another boat because you're on a collision course or something. And then you will switch to a different channel to, to, for the rest of the conversation. It's exactly the same that you do on a mailing list. You call for people on a mailing list with a good subject line, and then whoever wants to jump in a discussion can do that by staying the same thread, or otherwise you just ignore the complete discussion based on the subject line. So this is the asynchronous communication channel. And the other thing that you need is a case management tool. Uh, at Apache, uh, we often use Jira or Git tickets for that. Uh, Git tickets are very popular. Simply something where you can isolate the case on the web page, for example, and then handle the case completely in this web page. Uh, it could be, uh, it could be, uh, you know, a whiteboard. If you're working, if you, if we were working asynchronously using this room as our command center. We could have a whiteboard where we, where we make decisions. That's totally, totally viable. But in software, we usually have, use issue trackers or, or wikis or, or something like that. So if you work in this way, you don't need meetings. You have more, thing to, more time to think, which is very important. And you're more pre precise if you're working in a foreign language or if you're shy. If you have an in-person meeting, it's usually the loud mouth who get gets the attention. You know, we have people who are always talking, and they are good at talking, and they are good looking, so everybody listens to them. And then the poor guy who's shy and, and you know, uh, or, or maybe even just if you need a bit more time to think, you can, you can miss your, your turn. Someone asks a question, and you have this quick person, oh yeah, no, I don't, we do it like that, like that, like that, and you're still thinking. You know, and your answer comes too late. <laughs> and maybe it was better. And in this way, you can take your time to think. Um, uh, Dirk, Dirk van Gurek is, a, is an Apache member who uh, is active in the IETF, uh, you know, big standards organization. He told me that these guys, they have meetings, they will spend a weekend talking about new standard. They do not make the decisions at the meeting on purpose. They leave it open, they go up to the option stage, and then they make the decision later on a mailing list. Just to give people time to think, just to give also people, uh, you know, if your English is not your, your main language, uh, you take maybe you need more time, or maybe if someone speaks fast with an accent you don't understand. So, there, there, you know, there's ways to couple that with synchronous meetings in a very efficient way. So, there, there's definitely advantages to, to working like that. So, I think we have. We have defined what it is. I need to a bit of my magic potion. <laughs> <laughs> and let's talk about why. I already talked a bit about the why, but let's be a bit more precise. My my father was a carpenter. We he had his workshop on the on the basement and we had the, the, the flat on the first floor. And quite often he was late for lunch. And the excuse was they were gluing things. 
you know, you start gluing a piece of wood and then you can't stop, you have, you have to finish it. Otherwise it's totally ruined. So if we would have insisted on him being at noon sharp at home for lunch, he would have been less efficient. We would have stopped the flow and then got to restart it. When you do software, it's the same thing. There's a very good blog post by Paul Graham, you have the, the uh, URL here, about uh, maker schedule versus manager schedule. If you're a manager and you, your week is done of meetings, if you have one more meeting, say one hour, it's one fortieth of your week, or maybe in Germany one thirty-fifth. <laughs> but uh, you know, it's just one more slot, and that's it. So it's easy to accept one more meeting. If you're a software developer, developer you, you probably know what it means. You're in the zone. Uh, you, you start doing something complex, and you need these three hours uninterrupted. Otherwise, it's ruined. Otherwise, your whole afternoon is gone. So that, and that's the maker schedule. Someone who works on maker schedule, someone who's creating things, they, they need their blocks of time uninterrupted. And meetings are more expensive for those people because the meeting can, can destroy your flow session, which was would otherwise last three hours. So that's the that's the, uh, the the big difference. And then that's something you have to explain to the managers. You know, tell them, okay, you're you're inviting these five developers for your meeting. Think about it. Think how much it can cost them actually <coughs> in terms of energy and, and waste of of their their flow cycles. So meetings are extremely expensive. Uh, Someone I was reading an article the other day, and the guy said, if you had to expense the cost of your meeting every time, people would think a bit more about calling meetings. You know, you do a meeting, and after that, you have to expense four thousand seven hundred dollars because you call twelve people, and you know they are expensive and so on. So I think we, we have to, to think about that, and, and people should be very careful. I'm, I'm well known in my company for rejecting most meetings. I have the luxury, you know, being a principal scientist, I have the luxury to be able to say no. But, but I, you can do that. If someone calls you for a meeting, there's no agenda. You don't go. It, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to your meeting. If there's no agenda. What are we going to do? If I, I, if I have no way to prepare for a meeting, Usually I will just reject it. Sometimes yeah, there's good reasons, but I think we can be careful about it. And it's so easy to, uh, for a meeting to fail. You know, oh, sh oh, we forgot to invite Bob. We cannot make the decision. Or, or Bob forgot to come. <laughs> or uh, there's no clear goal. There's a meeting. You know, people think that the meeting will magically solve things. It doesn't. Uh, we don't understand what's being said. Uh, people aren't prepared happens very often, then should better, you know, uh, do, uh, uh, organize it in a way that people can come prepare and so on. There are many ways for meetings to fail, so uh, I think meetings are precious. I love meet, I love high energy brainstorming vision meetings. Those are fantastic. You know, if you can be with people in a room, have a whiteboard <coughs> and, and draw up crazy ideas, that's so much more efficient if you can do, do that in person. Doing a status meeting in person is a big waste of time. Uh, the, uh, Jason Fart from uh, Basecamp wrote a blog post I think two weeks ago about that. Uh, you know, a status meeting, you have one person talking, all the other are listening, They are pr pr probably 80% of them are not interested. Uh, there, there's a better way of doing that. And we can, with these mechanisms, we can, we can I think, avoid many, many such meetings. Okay, so we have talked about what it is, uh, why, and let's talk about how we do it. So let's, let's dig a bit more into the tools, and I'll try to be more concrete and talk about the tools that we, we use. So typically, um, I would say my favorite way of organizing that currently, and that's, that's how we try to do, to do, that's how I try to do that in the projects in, in, uh, in my work, uh, is to use a mailing list for the uh, discussions. So the, the shared channel is a mailing list. It can also be a Slack channel. Slack is very popular these days. Uh, the problem with Slack is that it's quite hard to catch up if you were away. If you, Sometimes you have decisions that take three months 
because they are complex and you have to, to try things and, and come back and so on. Uh, with a mailing list and an archive, it's also difficult, but it's possible to really catch up and find a thread and, and, and be interested in the thread. Slack, I think, or, or other chat channels, uh, I think need a lot of discipline to do the, to do the, the same thing. We probably can, but I'm, I haven't seen that so far. So for me, the, the default setup is a, a mailing list for the, uh, for the discussions. And then a, a ticket tracker. Uh, I, my favorite is the git, git tickets, I think, work pretty well for, for discussions that lead to decisions. Uh, they're concise. They, they lead people to quoting uh, intelligently. You know, the worst on, the, on a mailing list, the worst is people using Outlook, which prevents them from doing same quoting. Uh, and uh, no, then you get messages that, or you get shallow discussions because you don't know exactly what the person is replying to. And I, I like Git tickets for that. So for me, that's a good. Uh, so in my case, I would say share the same communications channel as a mailing list, used with discipline because you need that. And then the case management tool is for me is Git or 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 Jira tickets. And and what's difficult is knowing when to switch from one to the next. You know, you start a discussion, which you think will lead to a decision. At some point, you have to you have to leave the mailing list. It becomes too specific, too precise. Okay, we are done with the brainstorming and options phase, so we move now to the uh, to the tracker to do the formalizing and the, and the clear definition of the uh, of the decision. So for the brainstorming, uh, we definitely use the shared channel, and that's where meetings can be extremely powerful. Brainstorming, as, 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 we, as I said, in, a, in, a, in the same room or even with a digital whiteboard can be much more efficient than spending time to discuss. So again, maybe a combination of synchronous and asynchronous, depending on how you can do it. Then the second phase is the options. It will often happen on the, on the shared channel. Uh, but then uh, it's maybe maybe at that point where it makes sense to move to the to the case management tool to the issue tracker to, to define clearly what are the options that we have and maybe have links to details to prototypes to whatever and then you keep just the skeleton the backbone of the decision in the in the tracker then for the consensus building it's also often a combination of both if if the consensus is very hard to 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 emerge, you might need lots of discussions, and this might be easier on the on the mailing list because it's unstructured. It's you might have ten discussions for each option. It's really a complicated uh, decision, and then uh, the, the 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 history of the actual consensus should be in the ticket because you want to document that. What also ha often happens with decisions is that you have people who come up later. They come back from vacation or they join your team later and you have to explain the decisions to them. If they can find the information here, all, you know, all, the, all, the, all the basics of the decision should be documented in the ticket and then you don't have to spend one hour explaining them. They can read and get most of the information in self-service, then they might have, have a few <coughs> clarifying questions but they can really find the history of the decision and I think it can be extremely valuable to, to keep a trace of how you came how, you, how you, you came to the consensus. So I would do most of the consensus in the tracker, except if it's messy, then it might be better to have the decision in the shared chat. And then the decision itself is definitely something for the tracker where you want to document. Uh, either you had the natural consensus, which is the best. You know, if you just discuss, say, oh yeah, yeah, it's obvious, we take option B, and then you just have to, to write that down. Uh, something that we see in many incubating Apache projects is that people want to vote on everything. They say, oh yeah, no, Apache plus one, plus one. You don't need to vote on everything. The goal is to build consensus. How you build it does not matter. If it, the best is, is when the consensus just emerges from the discussion, and if not, maybe you have a vote, or if it's a bit conflictual, then the vote can be good because it, it gives you a clear picture. We have 12 people who are for option B, three people for option C, they have good reasons. So maybe you say, okay, we take option B, but there's something to, to look at, and, and you look at it. So the, the Apache voting rules are very good for creating consensus where it doesn't emerge naturally, but you don't have to use them all the time. What, what counts 
is the consensus and hopefully documenting the decision so that it's uh, you know so that the history is uh, is is here for people who need to, to look at it later. And one thing again, the principles are not limited to software de development. You can you could run any project like that. We we do it in software because that's where people work uh, remotely a lot. But you could totally use it in a uh, different field. So this is this is my view. And again, the where where your team needs to get used to doing this is especially in how to use the tools. Uh, you know the mailing list etiquette, uh, the discipline, or using different channel. What's the, the discipline for your channel? I was speaking about the marine radio. You know, on the marine radios, you have very specific rules to respect, so that the, the broadcast channel is not too busy, and you move away to different channel to talk and so on. Um, so you, you need you need time for your team to get used to that, and it, it doesn't come magically. So and it's good to have coaches or to have someone who's kind of a shepherd of this process and can, can look at it and, and try to improve it as, as you go. So the tools are just one thing, but it's, of course it's mostly how you use it that makes a difference. Um, about building consensus, and that's where, that's where I come with the, my example from the, from the Swiss government. Uh, I usually, actually the Swiss government used to run on software that I wrote. Uh, just a little bit of it, but uh, they, they use a, a system to create the agenda agenda for their uh, weekly meetings, and they uh, I, I'll talk about it later. They use ColorList to, to do that, and I was involved in that in that project a long time ago. But what what I highlighted here, this is a page from the Swiss government that, that describes how they make their decisions, and they also say the Swiss government. So the Swiss government, the Switzerland is governed by a council of seven people. They have to agree on, on, you know, they have to get consensus to make a decision. And they say, it decides by consensus whenever possible, and sometimes also holds a vote. So it's exactly the same thing. It's reassuring to see that people totally outside of the software world, which also work remotely, uh, you know, use the same principles. And also, this is important. We've also seen some, some Apache colleagues who are confused about that. Consensus does not mean unanimity. In our context, consensus, it means widespread agreement. It means, you know, most of us agree. Uh, if you go to dinner tonight with, with uh, friends, you might not have unanimity on where to go, but you say, okay, the majority wants to go to this Italian place, so let's, let's go there. That's the same, same thing. So natural consensus is best. When that doesn't emerge, then you need ways to to build it, and that's where the Apache voting rules are very useful, and they're, they're pretty well defined on that page, uh, you know, the plus one, minus one, and these, these things. One, also one important thing in Apache is that the vetoes, uh, there's a very restricted way to use a veto. We don't want wet vetoes in Apache in general, because the veto can allow someone to block something, and that's not good. At some point, it's better to have a suboptimal decision than to have no decision at all and be stuck. So that's why we are very restrictive on the way you can uh, use uh, vectors. Okay, let's, uh, I'm going to present, so we're done with the theory, uh, and uh, I'll show a few examples of where, where this is used. And you'll see that, that people can use very different tools, but the, the basic principles are the same. A very interesting example, which is uh, informal, but very useful, is the Cordova Discuss. It's just a Git repository that the, uh, the code, Apache Cordova is a project. They do a, a mobile uh, library, a very good one, by the way. Uh, and they, they have, they have uh, this Git repository, which is used to propose projects, propose extensions, or propose new things for the project. They, they probably, uh, you know, they looked at the mailing list and said, it's, it's difficult to do that on the mailing list. There's not enough structure. We need a bit more structure, but not too much. So what they did is that if you want, say for example, you want to create a version of Cordova for the BlackBerry from 1995, because you have one, uh, kind of a stupid example, but you need that. Uh, how, how do you go about doing that? So you would first, it's their rules. They, have, they find their, their, their own process. You create a ticket. So they kind of do the opposite that I was telling you. And that's where it's interesting because it also works. 
uh, if you want to, to propose a new project, you create a ticket saying, hey guys, I would, I would like to do that, what do you think? And then you have the discussion in the ticket. So the ticket is your shared channel. It's pretty nice because you have, you know, you have one ticket per, per discussion, so you don't mix them up. As I said, the, the Git tickets uh, lead people to do same quoting, which is very good. So that, that, I think that's a good way. And then the, the, the basics of the ticket is to decide whether you want to make that a project or not. So it's the first stage, getting your project accepted. And then if, it's, if people say, yeah, OK, we think we should do that, then you create a document, a markdown uh, text file here in this repository, which describes what you want to do. And then you will refine it using the ticket to comment on the refinements that you do. And then the, the final decision will be accepting this document as something that we should do as a project. So I think that's pretty cool. It's pretty simple. Uh, it's pretty isolated. You can, you can work on the tickets that you're interested in and totally ignore the rest, which is very good. So I think that that can be a good alternative to using the mailing list for something where you need just a bit more structure to make a first decision to do the project or not, and then many small decisions to refine the document that describes the project. Uh, totally asynchronous. You don't need a meeting. You, you know, this can work. Uh, very uh, very efficiently. So it's interesting here to see that the tools are different, but the process is exactly the same. Uh, this is how we do it in the Sling project. Uh, so Sling is a is a it's a web framework uh, from the Asus Software Foundation. It's a small project, but it's the one where I'm active, so I know it well. Uh, so we do it uh, kind of the opposite way, as I was saying. We use the mailing list for brainstorming when we want to do something. We usually use the mailing list to define the options. I would say also it works here because it's a pretty small project. There's maybe 10 to 12 active committers, so it's pretty manageable on the mailing list. It's not too big. And then we usually we create a ticket uh, to describe the thing more precisely. That's where we build the consensus, maybe with additional discussions on the mailing list. And then if that works, we might have a vote. And then the, the, the final result is a, is a ticket in the tracker, which is pretty clean, doesn't have all the noise of the discussions that were here, and that are usually throw away once the decision is made. You might not need all the details. And we try to have a ticket that describes the gist of the decision making without all the noise that goes around it. it it's, a lot of it is about that, you know, uh, separating the noise from the actual uh, consensus building and, and decision making process. And this is uh, also examples from uh, non-software development fields. On the left is the Apache Board of Directors, which uh, makes a lot of decisions every month. So the way the, way the board works, the, you know, the core of the board work, or an important part of the Apache Board work, is to approve the, the reports of the projects. Every Apache project has to do a report every three months, and then the board has to decide to approve or maybe ask for compliments, or maybe reject the, the report. And we do that completely asynchronously. Uh, we approve about 70 to 80 projects every month in a meeting that has two hours at most. And it's not only about that. So it's pretty efficient. We make like you know 80 decisions in one hour of a phone meeting uh, between people from different cultures. You know, I'm not. Uh, I'm not a native English speaker, so sometimes I need to ask people to repeat and so on. So it's not fantastically, it's not a fantastically efficient call, but it's efficient for two reasons. First, we use a back channel. During the call, we have an IRC chat channel for the jokes and the, you know, can you, what did he say and, and the background information and so on. And uh, the other reason why it's efficient is that everything is prepared in advance. We, we have a very simple case management system, which is a single text file, and where we have one paragraph or one section for each decision. And then we can put comments. You know, I put my initials, and I write a comment in this file. So it's just one file. It's an extremely simple system, but which has the attributes of a case management system. Every case is a few lines of text with a definite structure. And then you, we work in that, and we use the, the uh, version <coughs> control take care of the, of the coordination. So it works. It's very simple. 
But the key is that the meeting is prepared. There's lots of preparation. Every one of us spends maybe one or two hours preparing the meeting by reading the comments in advance, re replying to them, so that we can solve as many or make as many decisions before the meeting. And then in the meeting, we just have to formalize the decisions. We have a, a system, Sam Ruby, uh, who is currently the Apache president, has been writing uh, Wimsy, a tool for that. And then we can see the decisions out of this text file with some simple parsing. We see decisions are either green or orange or red. And it, it tells us if, it, if we already agree or if we need discussions and so on. And interestingly, the, uh, the Swiss government works in the same way, as I was saying. Uh, this is also from the same page you have the address here, where they present the way they work. They have, they have a paper lists for the agenda, but which are, which are different colors. So for example, the orange list is the, the items on, on which they agree. So they know in advance that they agree because there was some preparation. And then in the meeting, they just need to check. Formally, they need to approve them in the meeting. That's a requirement of their you know, uh, parliamentary process. Uh, but, but it goes very fast. Uh, I, I don't know, I have, have not been in their sessions. You can, cannot do that if you're not a federal chancellor. Uh, but uh, maybe they say items 12 to 20 from the orange list. Is anyone opposed to approving them? Or maybe they go 12, 13, and people say yes, 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 and it goes very fast. And then they have a different, the blue list uh, has responses to parliamentary requests, so this might need a bit more discussion before you can reach a decision. And uh, the white list items are, this, they say, are discussed and decided one by one due to their political importance. You can read behind that that there is no consensus on these items. So they need in the meeting to build a consensus. The good thing is that if you start with the easy ones, you will have maybe done 50 decisions, and then it takes just 10 minutes, and then you can take time for the most, the more the harder ones or the more, more important ones. And they they take about uh, 2,500 decisions each year. And in a yearly, in a weekly meeting, which lasts a few hours, with seven extremely busy people, so I think it's pretty efficient, I, I report. But it's interesting to see that the, the principles are similar, and these are, these are, these are synchronous meetings. So it's, it's a hybrid combination of preparing the meeting as if it was asynchronous, or everything you can do in a synchronous way, and then keep the meeting just for the, 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 the things where it really makes sense to be together because it's difficult, because it's more efficient, because it's complex and really brainstorming and so on. And both the Apache board and the Swiss government uh, work in the same way. It's, it's, you know, we sometimes, uh, I even have a blog post about that, we sometimes say that the Apache Software Foundation is a Switzerland of open source. This is another <laughs> example. <laughs> But it's, again, it's interesting to see that there can be different tools to implement the same things, it's just the concept that stays the same. And here we see that the, the hybrid, you know, between, uh, it's not because you have a meeting in person that you don't have to pre prepare it. And if you can throw away half of the items before the meeting, it's fantastic. It gives, saves time in the meeting for the interesting or, or, or difficult stuff. And that's it. So we have seen, uh, the basic tools, so you need a shared asynchronous communications channel. Uh, you need a case management tool, which can be as simple as our text file for the Apache board or a whiteboard if the meeting happens in this room. Then you have the four phases, brainstorming, options, consensus, decision, where you need to <coughs> adequately switch from one tool to the next based on which where you are and based on, on your team's way of working. And this is where you, your team might need to get used to to doing that, and then, uh, yeah, it, it requires practice and you need to adapt it to, to your own culture. There's no one size fits all. I think what's important is to focus on the basic principles, and then you can adapt that to your own team. And again, the goal is to keep things efficient and fun. You know, if you have a, as I was saying, if you have a meeting where you're discussing big ideas, it's, it's really fun and it's really efficient, and that's where it makes all the difference to be all together in the same room or even on the phone or in video conference. If you're in a video conference to do boring stuff, it's boring. And uh, so we have, to, we have to be careful about that. I have a reading list. I have a number of articles, uh, not of 
maybe some of mine, but also links to other people's articles in this on this URL. And this is something that I've been I started this year, uh, defining more precisely the requirements for the central asynchronous channel, because uh, I, like I was saying before, I, I think uh, so. Slack is very popular today. I don't think it works fantastically for for in this role, and I'm, so I'm trying to define it that more precisely. To be able to say, you know, if we have this function, then uh, it would work for me. So for me, the favorite tool is still mainly main list. But as I said, main, main list require a lot of discipline to be efficient and fun. So it, depending on your team and your tools, it can be can be a bit hard. Uh, so that's all I have. Thank you for being here, for your attention, and I'm. I'm open for questions. Uh, I realize I'm standing between you and your train or you and your dinner. So. Uh, <laughs>